bit of gutters, we're going to make some bread. I'm going to make some sourdough bread. My sourdough starter, apart from a little mishap, uh, we're at scrap it and start again, it's going really well. Um, I had to get a new jar as well because the other jar broke. Uh, I think I hit it with something, but we'll come to the start in a minute. We're going to do an ancient grain sourdough. Now, this um, I come across this flour on the um, site where I've been buying a lot of my sort of flours from bakery bits, and this is from the Matthew Cotswold Flour Company, and this is a stone ground ancient Cotswold crunch. So it's got ancient grains and spelt flakes in it. So it's actually a mixture of emma wheat, which I've used in some recipes before, um, einkorn, which is a very early form of um, wheat, and spelt, and it's also got some added spelt flakes. So we're going to make that. Now to do that, we need to effectively create a not so much a starter, we need the sourdough starter. So this sourdough starter has been going for about three weeks now and basically you're just feeding it every day at the moment um, and you can see it's bubbling away nicely there. Um, it's starting to collapse back, I fed it early this morning, it's starting to collapse back. Ideally you want to leave it a little bit longer but because of the timing of the sourdough um, all the events that we have to do and when I can do them um, I might have to use that a little bit early. So you need your starter culture, you need some flour and you need some water and then we have a long pause. So into a bowl and you need to make it sure you've got enough room for this to rise. Last time I made uh, dough um, giving them out of flour I thought to myself well this bowl will be more than big enough and it came out over the top. So get yourself a decent sized bowl and we're going to measure into that 166 grams. Did you hear that chink? That's the old spout place. 166 grams of this flour. And this, like I say, is going to be like a, almost like a, a starter. So although we've got our sourdough starter there, what we need to do is actually get it fermenting some of the flour that we're going to use. Oops, I'm talking and I'm going in there too much. Um, so we will be obviously using a lot more of that flour when we come to make the bread, but at this stage, like I say, what we're doing is creating this starter culture. Now, our next thing we want to do is add some of our actual sourdough starter. So what I'll do is I'll just give it a bit of a mix up and I want to add 83 grams of that. Now I don't need to do anything more with what's left in here because when I come to feed that next time, um, most of this gets discarded anyway. Um, So I'll put that by and that will later on that will get sorted and fed. And now the final thing into there is I want some sort of roughly room temperature water. Um, that's 30, that'd be fine. And to that I'm going to add 70 grams of this water. Or 70 mils. It's easy to do it by weight. Whoops, and a little other time. Um, and what we'll do is I'm just going now going to make sure all that flour is mixed in and it is forming quite a, a stiff dough okay and what we're, the next thing to do is we then just cover this and we put it to one side in the room it doesn't have to be necessarily anywhere particularly warm but obviously not too cold at this stage and we're going to let it basically ferment away for five hours so for the next five hours we can't do anything else well actually that's not strictly true because in four hours time 
we're actually going to measure out our yeast and we're going to start an autolyse. I think it's autolyse, although I want to pronounce autolyse, apparently meant to say autolyse. This autolyse function where we're going to hydrate the flour, um, which actually boosts the actual mix later. So that's just about all mixed in. So like I say, I'm going to cover this and in four hours time, we'll come back to the next stage. The Levain is working well nicely now. It's starting to rise up and bubbly. Uh, that's got another hour to go. So before that, we need to alter these our, uh, our flour. So I've got 250 grams of that ancient grain um, flour mix. And then I've got some temperature, uh, more room temperature -ish water. And at this stage, I'm gonna add 182 grams of that. It seems a bit of a, a sort of odd amount, um, partly because um, there's such thing as a sort of baker's percentage um, where you have set amounts, but I want to make an 800 gram loaf. So um, that's why some of the figures do seem a bit, bit odd, if you like. Right, so this forms quite a stiff sort of dough, you know, at this stage that's that's fine, okay. So now all I do is we're now just going to cover this over and we leave this for the remaining hour when we'll be doing um, combining it. Now when we come to do that we may need to add some more water. Um, we're also going to add eight grams of sea salt, which I've got measured out, but we don't add that just yet. Um, and essentially then that will be all the ingredients in there. Like I say, may need to add a little bit more water. We see how it goes. So I've gone from a period of um, not a lot happening, various stages, uh, things start moving a little bit quicker now. So there's my autolyzed uh, flour. And here's my nicely active uh, Levain and what we're going to do now is we're just going to combine these two you can see how this has become nice and sort of springy if you like so I'm going to get that in there we're going to mix it together cover it over and just let it rest for where you want your scraper. Get in there, get that one out. There we go. And like I say, we're just going to then let that rest for 20 minutes before we start going through a series of folds. So, get me time wrong. Oh, that turns up on and off. Well, there we go. So once that's combined, cover that over and we'll rest it. That's at its rest. So at this point, all we're going to do is we're just going to add that salt. Now the salt's important. There's a bit of a preservative. Now at this point, um, what we're going to do is we're now just going to sort of fold the dough several times um, before we then again um, put it to one side and let it rest for about another 15 minutes. So using a dough scraper, uh, you can sort of wet your fingers if you like and do it that way. And um, all I'm doing is I'm just trying to get all that salt mixed in well, it's quite chunky salt. And then like I say, when I'm happy that that's, that's done, cover it again, 15 minute wait. Now we're going to begin a series of six folding sessions. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I could do it in the bowl, but I'm going to scrape it out onto there and then just wet my fingers and we're just going to pick it up and we're going to fold it over. 
Now it is already at this stage quite sort of stretchy if you like. We want to be able to get it so that when we pull it up it doesn't break but that's looking pretty good and then what we're going to do is that's going to go back in that bowl um, and at this stage it's going to rest for 15 minutes and we're going to repeat that twice more and then um, we're going to do another three folds but this time there will be half an hour between each okay so having a good scraper means I can get most of that out of that bowl on there but there we go so 15 minutes I'm going to repeat that 15 minutes repeat it and then three more after 30 minutes I'm not going to bother showing you all them okay and then at the end of that we're getting pretty close to all that we can do tonight so now we've come to the final fold so once again we tip it out the bowl and what we're going to do is give it its final fold so you know just pulling it up and I mean this is quite a chunky dough because of the the flakes in it but it's stretching nicely and we pull it up and over put your hands if you need to stop it sticking rather than using flour and now all we're going to do is just put it back into that bowl cover it and we're going to let it rest for an hour and at the end of the hour we're going to bring it out for its final shaping and put it in the banneton so before that hour's up we'll have to prepare our banneton final proving um, is going to be overnight in the fridge and we're going to do it in one of these things a banneton okay now the banneton quite often comes with a linen cover and you've got a choice you can either put the linen cover over the banneton and get just like a smooth finish to it or you can put it directly into the basket and you'll get these nice ridges and we're going to do that but what's important is that we flour it well because we don't want the dough sticking to it otherwise it won't come out properly now you, you can use ordinary flour but the problem with that is the dough will sort of basically soak that up and stick to it and it ends up sticking so what we do instead is we use some rice flour now the rice flour um, is not absorbent like the normal flour is and therefore doesn't sort of get taken up by the dough and doesn't get um, moistened if you like and therefore isn't a problem it also when we come to bake it uh, rice flour has a much higher burning point if you like um, not that overly matters at this stage because we can brush it off but if you wanted you can sort of sprinkle that onto the banneton uh, sorry onto the proven dough when we put in the oven and it tends not to get such a darker sort of crust whereas if you add ordinary flour um, it will do so we're just making sure we've got this thoroughly floured and then I'm just going to put it to one side because what we're going to do now is take our dough and do our final shaping so I don't need that because I'm going to cover it with the linen um, so we remove our dough and what we want to do is start with our final folds which is still a little bit sticky this dough it's quite high hydration okay and what we're going to do is gradually shape it round until we're essentially going to get a ball and what I might do is because this is particularly sticky I might just add a touch of flour 
Um, you don't really want to be using too much flour as you go along because you'll, you know, you'll dry up the dough. But I think for this final stage, because of how stiff it is, I'm just going to get a little bit of flour on the surface um, just so that we can mould it a little bit better. What I'm doing is I'm basically just turning it. Surface here. Um, rotating it, the idea being we want to try and stretch the dough over the top. Um, if you're not too good at this, or not used to it at this stage, then you can make it with slightly less water. As it happens, I didn't add all the water that was originally needed. So look, that's tearing at the top there. Um, so just going to need to do some folding, get that stuck back down. This is the dangers of actually adding more flour is that then you don't get that adhesion and then finally, what we're going to do is we take our banneton that's been nicely floured. Um, just going to give it a light sprinkle on the top of some more rice flour. Like I say, this won't really stick, so this isn't a problem so much. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to flip it over into that banneton. That is now going to get covered over. Uh, you can use cling film. I'm going to put the, the wrap over it and it's going to go in the fridge and we're just going to let it prove overnight ready for baking in the morning. So when we come to bake it, first thing we need to do is put our Dutch oven or our bread oven, preferably. You can do it without one, in which case you'll need to get a dish of boiling water in there to get some steam in your oven. But we're going to be doing it in like a Dutch oven and in which case we put that Dutch oven into the cold oven and then whack the oven up on full and give it probably up to an hour to get the thing really really hot so that's what we've been doing tomorrow so simply about now this is in the fridge have a bit of a clean up and then it's baking time so all I'm going to do I'm going to dust the bottom with some rice flour and then I'm going to place a circle on top of that and because I'm lowering this into a Dutch oven and I'll probably care if I don't burn myself what I've got here are some strips of paper flat like a sling so now I'm just going to put that onto that and turn that out and I heard that nice plop as it came out so let me just get that rice flour out of the way and get that cloth out so now lift that banneton off. Now we don't wash the banneton. Okay, the banneton um, stays like that. But what I am going to do is brush off this rice flour because I think I said to you the rice flour won't won't catch the same way. It won't sort of caramelise or whatever the same way as ordinary flour. So. If you want, you can leave it on there and it will leave you with a like a white surface. But what we're going to do instead is I'm now just going to give it a mist in and then give it a light sprinkle of ordinary bread flour. I'm not using the same flour that I baked it with simply because it was. Um, it's all bitty and now what I'm going to do now um, you could score it how you like but remember this has got chunky bits in it so it's not going to be quite like I was going to do but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut through the skin I'm actually going to Now that's not quite gone there, but never mind. Cut 
through like that. Okay, and now, very carefully, so my oven's been on maximum, um, 250 times 60, with the Dutch oven in it all that time for about an hour now. So the Dutch oven is really, really hot. So we bring it out, I'm working fairly quickly. And being very careful that we don't touch it with our bare hands, we're now going to lift that bread up, drop it in there. Oof. Almost forgot myself and put the lid up then. Um, and then just want to get the paper out of the way as best I can. Um, lid goes on, it's going to go back in that oven, and we're going to oops, we're going to cook it in there for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes. Um, I'm going to take the lid off and we're then going to then cook, let it cook for about another 10 minutes or until it's cooked or until you've got the brownness or the darkness of the crust that you want. The bread's had another 20 minutes, uh, did it, uh, keep my eye on it. Um, because of the nature of that flour it's not necessarily getting quite this sort of crunchy crispy um, crust that you might expect with say oh, you know like white white bread but let's get it out and have a look membrane it's hot so that's that out let's turn that oven down to where I normally have it let's turn the oven off and then put my glove back on before I forget now I had earlier when I checked on it just pulled them strips out so Let's just try and tip this up and just double check the bottom. It is nice and hollow, there's quite a hard crust on it, but there you go. Now I'm just going to put that on there and move that before I forget. Move it well away from the kettle in case anybody touches it. So now we just, so it hasn't perhaps split open as much as I might have expected. So we're going to let this cool nicely. So I've got it on my wire rack and then we perhaps might take a slice off just to taste it. Um, these ancient grains are very low on gluten. Um, they're low on gluten and therefore um, you don't get the sort of typical rise. Um, you can sort of see sort of the crumb texture that is a bit, little bit more typical of a sourdough. Um, let's just try a bit without any butter on it. So, you've got crunch there from quite a hard crust, but also getting them spelt flakes. Let's try. With a bit of butter. Mm. Not overly sour. I think, I don't know, actually, now I'll say that. I was just about to say, I don't think you would think this is sourdough. And then I've got a little bit of sat on this, in fact, that's actually quite a bit. So, there you go. This is sourdough loaf made with ancient green, grains, greens, ancient grains. I'm calling Emma and spelt with added spelt plates. Although, to be honest, at the moment, I haven't found any spelt plates. 